So I'm doing research for an upcoming video that dares to ask if a certain popular show is overrated. I started using Google Trends to compare popularity, and it revealed a lot of surprising patterns. I kept digging deeper and deeper, but I fell down a rabbit hole, so I'm dragging you down with me. We're gonna rank a bunch of shows from least popular to most popular, based on their highest peak Google search volume in the US in any month ever. First, we'll sample interesting shows in four tiers of popularity. We could call these tiers... Taste clusters. Taste clusters. Finally, let's look at the top 20 most popular shows of all time based on this algorithm. The algorithm takes word of mouth into account and f the algorithm! Up first, the bitter taste cluster at the bottom. The first show's peak search volume happened five months after its only season so far was released. This is the shortest peak we'll see in this video. Coming in last place, it's Squid Game. For the next show, we need to zoom out the timeline. You can see huge peaks for each of the three season finales and the season two premiere, causing a little double spike. Welcome to fucking Deadwood. Fuck you, sir. The huge spike in 2019 is due to Deadwood the movie. We'll keep pushing each show to the background as we go. Moving up the ranks, we've got a tie between the peaks of Curb Your Enthusiasm and Bojack Horseman. Bojack is so underappreciated. That's very nice, thank you. <laughs> are you nuts? Next, welcome to The Good Place. The Good Place's four seasons are clearly visible in the trends, including spikes for its season premieres and finales. You can see it got more popular with each season, but what is this spike a year later? The release of the final season on Netflix. Surprise! Next is Barry, also becoming more popular each season. Then it's... <laughs> I wasted everyone's time. Moving on, we've got Boardwalk Empire, then it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Just last month, Stephen King tweeted praise for this older show that remains quite popular, The Wire. Although Last Week Tonight with John Oliver has a higher peak, its popularity is definitely declining. You can clearly see the six seasons of Community, even the last one that aired on something called Yahoo Scream. But look at that huge spike five years after its final season. You should know now what caused this. Thanks in part to this surge in popularity, the six seasons in a movie. Six seasons in a movie. prophecy is happening. Filming was supposed to begin last month, but is now delayed due to the writer's strike. Community is actually tied with Severance. The big question is who will end up with a higher peak down the road? Severance, if it can ever get season two out? Or Community, if it ever releases its movie? What do you think? That's it for the first cluster. We've been zooming out as we go, so here's the peak of Squid Game at the beginning versus where we are now. But this is nothing compared to where we're going. Time for the second cluster, Sour. The West Wing towers above everything we've seen so far, and maybe would have been even higher if Google Trends was a thing back then. Next is the Golden Girls, whose peak, at least during the Google years, was the start of 2022 due to Betty White's death. The Golden Girls is slightly edged out by the, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Although its peak was the day all of season two was simultaneously released. Just look at the enduring popularity of Seinfeld. Do you know what that November 2004 peak is? The release of a documentary called The Seinfeld Story. The Parks and Recreation peak is when the finale aired. Twin Peaks has a single peak when a third season aired on Showtime 26 years after it was canceled. Season 35 of The Amazing Race is coming this fall, but you can see that it's not so amazing anymore. Next is Peaky Blinders with an upward trajectory, Narcos, which peaked in season two, Shit's Creek skyrocketing Shit's Peak, Teen Wolf with a surprising appearance, then The X-Files. It's time to play another game of Guess the Peak, this time in January 2016. It was the start of season 10, 14 years after season 9 ended. Finally, this taste cluster ends with The Handmaid's Tale, with its best days behind it. Now for the third cluster, Salty. We start with The Crown, 90 Day Fiancé, then friend of the channel, Better Call Saul. You can see how popular the final season was and the clear split between the two halves. Next is Arrested Development, then Ted Lasso. The series didn't end on a great note, but sometimes that can fuel more Google popularity. That's actually pretty good. Then there's Dexter with a resurgence in 2021 due to Dexter New Blood, which now is going to have another season thanks to this trend. Succession is next with its hype at an all-time high. We'll go full fucking 
feast! Mad Men reached a higher peak, though, followed by So You Think You Can Dance. An 18th season has not yet been announced, and based on the trend, it doesn't look promising. Sex in the City almost certainly would have had a higher peak if the data existed back then. Same with Survivor. This Is Us is next, and the top of this tier is Friends. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? Like Seinfeld, the sheer volume of searches and non-peak times is impressive. Here's Squid Game again for comparison. The last cluster before we get to the top 20 is Sweet. This cluster begins with Westworld barely edging out the previous shows. It had such promise, but that's a pretty steep decline. These violent delights have violent ends. The Office's peak is just barely higher, but has lots of sustained popularity, including a resurgence from streaming. Although this dip coincides with the show leaving Netflix for Peacock. I would like you to crunch those numbers again. It's a program. There's no such thing. Just crunch them. Just crunch them, please. Crunch. Did it help? The Boys' peak is tied with The Office's peak from 2007 and heading in the right direction. Loki's first season goes even higher. Next is Cobra Kai, and look at the difference between the first two seasons on YouTube Premium versus Netflix. Then there's The Voice on the decline, and then The Simpsons, which is still popular heading into season 35. The peak is from the release of The Simpsons movie. Look at this breakdown! Uh, 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 yeah, kaboom! What happened here? Lightning hit the transmitter? See, that's what I thought at first, but then... Hey, shut up! Ozark's peak is barely higher. Next is The White Lotus, and look at how it compares to Succession from earlier. Could this be predicting an Emmy upset for outstanding drama series? All of these are put to shame by... The Bachelorette. Next up are Downton Abbey and Rick and Morty, probably the only time those shows have been mentioned in the same breath. Let's watch some crazy stuff, yo! Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And the king of this cluster is... The Bachelor. And now, the top 20 of all time. Or maybe we call it the umami taste cluster. Sweet, sour, bitter, umami, and salty. 20. Number 20 was the first TV show in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. WandaVision! 18. No number 19 because we've got a tie for number 18. A historical fiction romance whose third season is about to come out, and a comedy based on one of the first ever viral videos that recently ended its 26th season. It's Bridgerton and South Park, another strange combo. 17. Number 17 is a reality show, Dancing with the Stars. 16. This is another reality show that really drops off when it's not airing, Big Brother. 15. Number 15 is a show on FX, that's right, American Horror Story. 14. Number 14 has had three seasons, with a crossover show on the same streaming service oddly continuing the plot between seasons two and three. The Mandalorian. 13. This recently finished its first season and has a pretty important connection with The Mandalorian. The Last of Us, also starring Pedro Pascal. 12. Number 12 is a musical that dominated 10 years ago. Glee. The spike in 2020 is from Naya Rivera's tragic accident. 11. Number 11 is considered by many to be the greatest show of all time. Google Trends only captures seasons 5, 6A, and 6B. The Sopranos. 10. Due to Emmy rule changes, number 10 is the first series to be nominated as both a comedy and a drama. Orange is the New Black. Nine. Number 9 could be the most polarizing show ever, but you can see that its finale got people talking. Lost. Eight. Number 8 ended last year, but spin-offs keep it alive and well. The Walking Dead. Seven. Number 7 was a controversial show whose first season nevertheless got a lot of acclaim. 13 Reasons Why. Six. Number 6 had a huge leap in popularity from season 1 to season 2, but we might have to wait a long time for season 3 due to the writer's strike. It has also had two one-hour specials in between. Euphoria. Five. When this show premiered, there was barely a blip of attention, and then nothing on the radar until season 2 started. When season 4 started, this was one of the first shows to experience a big boost by also becoming available on... There were technically five seasons, but the two halves of season five had a year in between, hence the six distinct peaks. You all know exactly who I am. That's right, it's Breaking Bad. Four. Let's stretch out the timeline for number four because it has been going on even longer than The Simpsons. If it weren't for its huge peak after the fall 2008 season premiere, this would have been much further down the list. Live from New York, it's Saturday night! 
And that peak happened right after this. And I can see Russia from my house. Three. Number three also started before Google Trends and is limping along after a 2017 hiatus and network switch. This is American Idol. Two. The fifth and final season is coming, but we don't know when. Filming was supposed to have already started by now, but just like with season four, we might have to wait a while. It's Stranger Things. Nothing comes close to the popularity of number one. Even its second highest peak outshines number two. The modest 2022 spike was due to the premiere of a prequel, Game of Thrones. From Squid Game to Game of Thrones, look how far we've come. In case you don't appreciate the scale of Game of Thrones popularity, here's number 20 all time again, and back here is the measly Breaking Bad peak at number five. We did it, we climbed out of the rabbit hole. But I've got so many questions for you. What do you think about measuring popularity this way? What was the biggest surprise in this video? Did I miss a show you think is worthy of comparison? And how many of the 72 shows we covered have you watched? What about every episode? Don't forget to subscribe to see the video that inspired this one still to come. One more question. Can you guess the show I'm going to be examining? There are clues in this video.